This video is sponsored by Belessa. Stay tuned for details about our giveaway. Back in December, I made a video about how autistic actress, author, content creator Chloe Hayden had decided to take a step back from social media. Someone else was going to be running it on her behalf going forwards as a result of bullying. As we know, TikTok is not always the kindest place and she posted this video of herself flapping her hands because she'd seen a pod of whales, for goodness sake. She had every right to be very excited and express her autistic joy in that moment. But this video went a bit viral and people were nasty. People kind of turned her into a meme and made these stitches and duets that weren't very nice. So most of the people in the comment section of my video that I made about Chloe Hayden deciding to take a step back from social media were pretty horrified that Chloe had had to endure this and were sticking up for Chloe. But there were a few people who made it clear they weren't fans. One person said they didn't hate Chloe, they despised her, okay? And their reasoning for this was, I think she is for real glamorizing her autism. And they kind of sarcastically said, oh yeah, she's not deliberately making a meme of herself. It took me a while to realize they were being sarcastic, but then I could tell from the thread and the other things they'd said, I was like, oh, you didn't mean that, okay? The neurodivergence of this girl has a certain intensity an intensity that lets her have an appearance all quirky and cool. But there are people with an autism, an autism so severe that it is a problem for all the simplest interaction with people, objects, society, and systems in general. And I think giving this cute and quirky look to autism is a disrespect to those people. I personally know autistic people that struggle very hard in their lives and I find this glamorizing really offensive. So this take, particularly this whole, I know one autistic and it's usually a male autistic person and they're nothing like you, so therefore you can't be autistic. We've heard this whole thing like a million times before, but I'm particularly interested in the use of the word glamorizing here. So if we go by the Cambridge definition to glamorize something, Thing is to make something seem better than it is, therefore more attractive. And then I also saw this definition, the act of glamorizing, making something or someone more beautiful often in a superficial way. So why do some people seem to think creators like Chloe Hayden, like Paige Leal, like Kaylin are glamorizing autism? Why do they think they're making autism seem better, more attractive, more beautiful than it actually is? And is there any truth to it? Are we at risk of society not taking autism seriously anymore and therefore not accommodating autistic people? Are quirky blonde TikTokers fast becoming the new stereotype of autism. And if you can't tell, I personally don't really think so. Here's why, in three parts. Part one, you don't look autistic, which could otherwise be called, but autism isn't girly. So I wonder if part of the reason why some creators are being told they're glamorizing autism is that people still seem to think that autism has a look. So there was this TikTok drama that happened at the end of last year. I decided not to comment on it at the time. The person who kind of started it all ended up backing down. They took their video down. I think they took their whole account down and they put out an apology as well, which is great. However, I think it's relevant to take a quick look at what they said for today's discussion. I'll blur out their face because I think they received enough heat. I have heard that they potentially even lost their job over this whole thing. Maybe that's not true. Maybe that's just rumors in TikTok comment sections. I don't know. But anyway, so basically they made a TikTok which was aimed specifically at two TikTok content creators who happen to be blonde. <laughs> One of them being Kaylin, who was a cast member on the first US season of Love on the Spectrum. And this person also addressed another autistic content creator called Hey It's Mary Alice, who has an incredible singing voice, by the way. I discovered that this week. Oh, good every time, time. Anyway, they basically said to these two autistic content creators, you don't look autistic. We've never heard that one before, have we? You don't have autism. I'm a registered behavior technician, which means I work with kids on the spectrum from ages, I think the youngest that I've ever been with was two years old and the oldest was maybe seven. So that's where I have the most expertise. I know that you're an adult and I haven't worked with an, an adult who has autism, but as somebody who has seen the traits of autism in kids and how those traits will carry with them throughout their life, I can definitely with confidence tell you you don't have autism. Almost everybody knows the phrase on the spectrum and most people know that autism is considered a spectrum. It has been for a very long time, since 1994, but then nobody seems to be able to remember that autism is a spectrum when they see a presentation of autism which doesn't match whatever picture of autism they've painted in their heads. Mary Alice did a response to this TikTok which we'll take a look at, but before we continue I want to say thank you so much to Belessa for enabling me 
to discuss this topic with you today. Balesa are a sexual wellness brand on a mission to help everybody who wants to embrace, explore and celebrate their sexuality. And of course that should include autistic adults, which is why I'm so grateful that Balesa wants to work with the channel again. This is our second giveaway together. If you sign up using the link below in the description, you definitely get something from them, whether it's a gift card to use towards a purchase or a free vibrator. And there were people in the comments last time very pleased with what they had. As I've mentioned before, I have a few health issues that affect me in this area of my life, unfortunately. So I'm personally always open to finding new ways I can reconnect with my body and also to remind myself that I can still have good experiences. And we all deserve them, regardless of disability or body type. I have a couple of their best-selling toys to show off to you today in some amazing colors. We have the lovely Red Air Vibe Pro for dual stimulation. It comes in this extremely discreet casing and it's completely silent. And then I'm very, very happy about this one because it's yellow. It's very on brand. It's called the Demi Wand. It works for all body types. Again, it's whisper quiet and the flexible neck allows you to get just the angle and the pressure you're after. They're both waterproof, fully submersible, made from premium quality silicon and USB rechargeable as well. You charge them in the cute little cases, which is very handy. If you want to enter the giveaway, click the link in the description, enter your email address and see what you get. There's nothing to lose. You might get yourself a free vibrator and you can support the channel a little bit as well. We have to talk about this. This person just said that they are a registered licensed professional when it comes to autism and that they are 100% positive that I don't have it. They literally said in this video that I personally need to leave the diagnosis to people who actually need it. And you look at a heavily edited video and tell me without knowing me literally whatsoever, that I don't have it. If I wanted to say anything for views, it would not be that I have autism because I already know that people won't believe me because people in my life don't believe me because I constantly get my experience invalidated. Uh, like daily, you're literally proving my point. My diagnosis literally saved my life. It, it changed my life. I worked closely for 10 years with an autism specialist. So Mary Alice talks about how she was actually diagnosed as autistic at eight years old, which is pretty early. But as she states, she constantly experiences invalidation both online and out in the real world as well. I do think behind this whole you're glamorizing autism thing, there is more than a hint of you're not autistic enough, basically. I don't think you're autistic enough to be speaking about autism. Paige Liel has made TikToks about this too. Hi, I'm Paige and I'm autistic. You are not autistic. You're nothing like my son, who's five years old and a boy and autistic. That's funny because I'm actually a 20 year old woman. So of course I'm nothing like your five year old son. You don't look autistic. What does autism look like? Uh, it looks like my five-year-old autistic son. If Chloe Hayden was a man, would she have received the same amount of hate as she did on this whale video? I don't know. Certainly if she had been a five-year-old boy, I don't think she would have had as many people at least accusing her of faking autism. I can't really imagine her being accused of glamorizing autism. Throw in a Thomas the Tank Engine shirt for good measure and maybe she would have been just right. Who knows? But probably not. She probably still would have been called acoustic because it's TikTok and nobody is safe. But I do wonder if by saying you're glamorizing autism, sometimes what people actually mean is you're feminizing autism. The person might be thinking, well, I don't associate autism with people who I perceive as women and girls or even people who are just more feminine, regardless of gender. So therefore, I'm gonna declare you officially unautistic by the power vested in me. You're too girly for autism. And in 1999, that was basically Professor Simon Baron Cohen's theory. He introduced this idea of the extreme male brain being the cause of autism, which was based on the ideas that females have an empathizing brain, so I suppose a kind of more emotional brain, a more caring brain, a more mobbly brain, perhaps, as opposed to men who had these more systemizing, logical brains. And he thought that autism might be an extreme version of this systemizing, logical brain. I suppose that seemed like an idea worth exploring because boys were and still are diagnosed more frequently than girls. But you kind of have to think about why that is. Maybe there really are biological reasons for more boys being autistic than girls, I don't know. But in all of the early autism research in the 20th century, they mostly looked at boys, sometimes exclusively looked at boys. So it kind of becomes this cycle where we've only studied boys, so then we only recognize and diagnose boys, and then we need to do some more research into autism, but the only people who have been recognized and diagnosed are boys, so then we only study boys, and then we only recognize boys, <laughs> you know what I mean? And usually white and wealthy boys at that as well. And then professionals are just not looking for people who don't fit that picture of autism, that bias that we've now 
built up of how autism looks, how we've seen autism in the past. We expect to see more of what we've seen previously. But as creator Ellie Middleton says, people seem more than happy for, you know, young women and for young autistic women to be diagnosed with mental health conditions. Maybe that just matches the narrative of the emotional woman. Maybe it just slots in and makes sense to people. They're like, yes, I can see it. I can see that. I don't see the autism. You know, all these people are like, oh my god, everyone's getting diagnosed with autism and ADHD nowadays. Like, it's their personal responsibility to make sure that every single person has the right diagnosis. Can we ask those people what they think about the fact that there are literally hundreds of thousands of teenage girls put on antidepressants who aren't depressed? I had to drop out of school because I couldn't get out of bed because I was on the maximum dosage of antidepressants. But no matter how gendered this whole you're glamorizing autism thing really is, I actually did a poll recently over on my community tabs. Oh, I love a good poll. If you like a good poll, there's lots of polls there. You can go and answer. <laughs> I said, autistic people, have you ever been told the good old, but you don't look autistic? Side eye emoji. And then 58% of people said yes. 29% said they'd heard something similar. Only 13% of people who answered the poll actually said no. So if 87% of people in my audience on this channel, which if you haven't noticed, is solely dedicated to autism, so I'd imagine there's quite a few autisms in my audience, a few of you have an autism, as that person said in the initial comment. You just look autistic then. Somebody tell me, because my audience is pretty diverse in terms of gender, in terms of age, in terms of location. I'm imagining not everybody watching me has the same amount of support needs or looks identical. You're not all twins. Is it not maybe just that the general public has a very poor knowledge of autism and what autism is, and yet still tries to have an opinion anyway. I don't know, maybe we just stop believing people. <laughs> maybe we don't start interrogating people's medical history. I don't know, or anything about their identity. Maybe we don't. Part two, you're too pretty to be autistic. So back to Mary Alice. She made a TikTok discussing how she loves being autistic and her kind of journey to self-acceptance. And someone responded saying she only loves being autistic because she's attractive, because she has pretty privilege, which is a concept used to examine the economic, social, and political advantages or benefits that are made to both men and women solely based based on their physical appearance. In Western societies, the ideal body type for men is often characterized by being tall and muscular, while for women, it tends to emphasize thinness and conventional notions of beauty. I only love being autistic because I have pretty privilege. So let's talk about it. Number one, I have not always looked like this. Actually, it wasn't really until probably the past few years where I really started to like actually like the way I look. I've been on both sides. And spoiler alert, neither one is easy. For reference, this is me in high school. Middle school and high school is when we are all learning how to be social in a normal way. And looking like this, while being autistic, was definitely not the easiest thing. Not only did I have to deal with my own very deep self-hatred, but I was the ugly weird kid who did not know how to function. That was the same experience that I had, particularly in high school. People noticed that I was a bit weird. There was something that they found a little bit off about me. And it is true that neurotypical people do often make very, very quick judgments of autistic people and judge them more harshly than they do their neurotypical peers in like a split second just must be based on something about your mannerisms or your facial expressions something that seems a bit different and it maybe sends an almost like threat response to their brain they're like oh they're a bit unfamiliar maybe they're not safe of course we don't look autistic to them though and yeah because they don't realize that we're autistic they don't know why they don't have a reason they just fill in the gaps with other negative assumptions and to me it was often my appearance so people People would, you know, kind of point out spots and laugh at spots that I had and talk about my hair and talk about my teeth and, you know, anything, anything. You know what it's like in high school, I'm sure, where it's just like any little part of you is going to be ripped apart. Anyway, I'm really I'm not liking my hair at the moment. Just look at it. It looks horrible, doesn't it? It just looks horrible. And, you know, I just don't like it anymore. And everyone's like, you know killed it for me so but then mary alice goes on to talk about how the downside is that now she's kind of seen as more conventionally attractive she has blonde hair she looks like she's you know keeping up with the gen z fashion to me i'm wearing shell earrings there are also shells on my collar i am not you know a fashion guru so i can't really comment on that and now since i'm pretty people don't believe that i have autism or they think that my life is so easy i've never endured a struggle in my whole life i've never hated myself i've never been admitted to the psych ward for 
for self-injury like never 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 and i wonder if this is perhaps why some people assume certain influences are glamorizing autism there is this tendency to believe if you're beautiful if you're well put together you've clearly spent a lot of time on your appearance you must be fine this is called the beautiful is good stereotype and i think it says an awful lot about how we view neurodevelopmental conditions which are obviously not about your physical appearance they're about how your brain has developed if we think beautiful is good and i would say society does tend to think you know autism is bad disability is bad perhaps we end up thinking that what we perceive as beautiful and attractive can't be autistic and I did stumble across this thread on Reddit, on the autism subreddit actually, where people were discussing Paige Liel in a not super kind way. As usual, a lot of people are saying she's faking and or misdiagnosed. And someone said, is it weird that I think she's simply too attractive to be autistic? Like if you have a genetic disorder, you will surely have some abnormal facial features, even if you aren't ugly per se. And even if you don't have that, the way you present yourself will be somewhat off. Everything they said there obviously is horrible and ableist. This whole beautiful is good thing just seems like such a warped kind of disney way of viewing the world. Maybe we do need to blame Disney and all the movies we watched as children but obviously yeah in, in Disney films villains typically are unattractive. You might even say ugly. They have characteristics that we typically see as unattractive and then the princesses and the princes are like the pinnacle of beauty and attractiveness. So then maybe it just doesn't make sense when somebody who you perceive as pretty and beautiful says they're also autistic as if you know those two things can't be true at the same time. Maybe the problem is the way society trains us to view disability. Maybe the problem isn't the content creators who put on a bit of makeup before they film a TikTok that's potentially going to go out to millions of people. And that that's the thing. Many autistic people try really, really hard to come across well and make a good impression. You know, we constantly monitor our body language and our facial expressions and how we're speaking. We're trying to make ourselves look normal, to look as normal as we possibly can, and we often <laughs> kind of fail at it still. But why would, you know, our physical appearance, the way we dress, the way we do our hair, the way we do our makeup, exercising more maybe to look more muscular, all of those things could be a part of masking your autism as well. Part of a similar part of camouflaging, part of fitting in, part of not standing out from the crowd. You know, I'm sure there are many autistic people who become kind of obsessive about it, as we can, because they just really, really want to be accepted. Maybe sometimes people look so polished and put together because they are autistic and they're trying to control the one thing that they can control. You know, there are a hell of a lot of autistic people who have eating disorders as well. Controlling ourselves and our own bodies can be a coping mechanism in a world that is very chaotic and confusing and overwhelming sometimes. So I don't know, I just think it's weird. These people could actually be criticizing autistic people for, you know, kind of showing autistic traits, just not in the way we maybe expect. They're not lining up their, their toy trains perfectly. They're trying to curl their hair perfectly instead. Plus, autistic special interests can in fact be anything. Paige Liel used to run a lash business. I don't know if that was a special interest for her, but certainly it could be. Two rather glamorous British celebrities have recently spoken out about their autism diagnoses. We have Melanie Sykes, who is a TV presenter, and then also Christine McGuinness as well. She's a model and an ex-beauty queen. She was on The Real Housewives of Cheshire. She is absolutely not the stereotype of autism, I would say. And she recently made a documentary called Unmasking My Autism. I think she only realized she was autistic because three of her children were diagnosed, which is the case for so many autistic women. But I was watching a clip on on YouTube an interview clip with Christine McGuinness and I saw this in the comments. Come on, playing the autism card is just BS. Not everybody has two ability, I think they mean the ability to deal with social situations. Some people are confident and others aren't. This is a lass that's paraded around the net with very little clothing on. And I mean, as a side note, why can't autistic people be sexy. Danny from Love on the Spectrum has also faced quite a bit of backlash and negativity from people for being so outspoken and direct about sex when she was on Love on the Spectrum. And a lot of these comments that have been made about Danny are really ableist and infantilizing. So if we need to post glamorous autism content to remind everybody that we're not children, autistic people do grow up into adults who are still autistic, but also should be treated as adults, then so be it in my mind. There was this hottest 
lipstick trend that went around on TikTok a while back, which I suppose tried to do just that. Oh, you don't seem autistic to me. That's because I'm really hot. You're not supposed to say that. Oh, did I say something socially inappropriate? My bad. How very non-autistic of me. Part three. If you make autism seem too cute, my son will lose his supports. So I suppose by glamorizing, some people mean trivializing. Autistic influencers are reducing autism to cutesy hand flapping and skipping around, wearing rainbow clothes. And if people start seeing autism as a little quirk, they're not going to continue funding for supports that autistic people really do need. Once again, I do wonder when people use this word quirky like you're just making autism seem quirky, whether that isn't a comment on the person's appearance. Creators like Chloe Hayden do have quite a unique and quirky fashion sense. Many content creators wear bright colours, they may dye their hair really bright colours. I saw this reel the other day where someone was like, I hate being perceived as an autistic person, but I leave the house every day looking like a clown. I personally always loved alternative fashion brands like Black Milk and Hell Bunny as well. This shirt's from Hell Bunny, I think. I got it on Vintage, but I think it's originally from Hell Bunny. And I've always liked a good, a good novelty earring. And the thing is, autistic people don't just dress like this to get attention on TikTok. But obviously, you know, people might want to try and look their best when they're on camera. But there's also something called dopamine dressing that autistic people and ADHDers can do as well, where you just, you wear what you like, basically. You wear stuff that makes you happy. You maybe don't always think so much about what's fashionable and the clean girl aesthetic and all that stuff that's on TikTok. And you, you know, you just go for colours that make you feel good or wear a lot of sparkly sequins or dresses that are quite stimmy that you can twirl around in. Again, it feels like are we potentially criticizing autistic people saying you don't look autistic enough while they're actually doing things that are quite autistic, but just not the stereotype of autism. Do you know what I mean? We might be dressing in a way that's a little out there because we don't follow social norms. Maybe we don't understand fashions. I don't know. I've never been really able to keep up that well. Or maybe we just don't care and we kind of have a bit of a, you know, disregard, disinterest in what's fashionable, we just want to wear what we like. That sounds like a pretty autistic thing to do and think. And also it can be for sensory reasons as well. You might want to go for things that are more comfortable. Autistic people might be quite rigid about what colours they find acceptable. Autistic people might also be more likely to dress according to their interests, you know? Like Black Milk do a lot of licensed prints, as they call it. You know, they have like Powerpuff Girl things and Scooby-Doo things, and they've got a Dungeons and Dragons thing at the moment, I think I've seen emails about. Because we're so passionate about the things that we like, we might want to wear those things on our body and again, care a bit less about what's fashionable. I don't know what people like Chloe Hayden are supposed to do. Are they supposed to start wearing suits and sit there and look very serious? Is she supposed to sit on her hands and and, you know, talk in a very somber tone and never show any sort of happiness. How are autistic creators supposed to talk about autism that wouldn't be classed as glamorizing autism? I'm not sure. Autistic creators are also told they only show the good parts of being autistic and they don't show the raw and real sides to autism. Number one, I just don't know what's wrong with sharing the good fun parts of being yourself, of being an autistic person. A lot of autistic people have not been accepted by the people around them and have therefore found it really difficult to accept themselves, as Mary Alice says here. So I want to be really clear on why I say I love being autistic. It's because it took me 25 years to love myself and being autistic is part of myself. It's not because I love the struggles and the mental battles that come with being autistic because it's not easy. It's actually very fucking hard. Does everything need to be doom and gloom and pain and suffering and meltdowns all the time? I don't think it does personally. I don't think disabled people should have to sit there and be a oh, woe is me every day. I think they are allowed to smile and be happy. There are creators with all sorts of different disabilities who talk about the disabilities now. I learned so much from them and I'm very happy to see them smiling and having a good time and enjoying their life. That is very welcome. I don't think, oh, you know what, they're trivializing this. This is bad, you know? We don't expect non-autistic creators to air all their dirty laundry and give up every part of themselves online and, I don't know, film themselves on the toilet, being raw and real and sharing every moment of their life. So why do we expect autistic people online to do the same thing? There are many creators, though, who are brave and who do share their autistic meltdowns. If you search that on TikTok, you will find it. And I think that that can be really helpful for people trying to discover 
discover if they're autistic or not, to see examples of how different autistic people experience meltdowns and just to, you know, make people feel like they're not alone. It can be very relatable, but you know, nobody has to share that content. But if you do search autistic meltdowns, you will mostly find clips that have been posted by parents of autistic children, filming the children, sometimes as a punishment to put it on TikTok, which, you know, I would personally prefer to have less of that content on the internet. And if that's an example of what autism looks like when it's not being glamorized, then I don't know, I think I'd rather have the glamorized version to be honest and not exploit any autistic children. Thank you. And I think autistic creators often share positive things because we do struggle, precisely because we do struggle. We need to laugh sometimes. We want to talk to people who relate. We want to kind of commiserate sometimes. <laughs> not that everything about autism needs to be negative again, but like a lot of these things are joking. It's not trying to make light of autistic struggles. It's this is actually really painful. And sometimes things that are really painful can be really hilarious, particularly to other people who are going to know exactly where I'm coming from. So I'm going to have a laugh about this to make myself feel better. Basically nobody owes you their darkest moments. So if only choosing to share your highlights reel on social media, as everybody does, is glamorizing autism, then so be it. I don't particularly want Chloe Hayden to feel pressured into filming herself at her worst when she gets torn down as much as she did for sharing a happy moment when she was stimming because she saw some whales. Like, I don't think Chloe is gonna be wanting to share her meltdowns with the internet anytime soon um, that is fine. You could look at this TikTok of Chloe Hayden and think, oh, she's making ear defenders look cutesy and fashionable, but actually some autistic people really, really need them and they can't go in public without them and they'll have a meltdown if not. But it's like, but yeah, Chloe really, really needs the ear defenders. And if she doesn't use them, she may have a meltdown. Autistic people who do mask are sometimes able to suppress how they feel, kind of internalize it, but then, you know, once you get home from the event, all the emotions might come out there. And I personally prefer Chloe Hayden to wear her ear defenders than have to suffer through a meltdown when she gets back to her hotel. Do you know what I mean? I think it's pretty brave to be at a very busy event like this where pictures are being taken and go, no, I need this accommodation. So I'm going to take this accommodation for myself. I think it's a brilliant example to autistic people everywhere. And yeah, they're cute and they match her outfit. Cool. It is kind of scary to do that, to make yourself look different from the pack in that way. You know, people might look and be like, oh, why does she need them? So I don't think there's anything wrong with kind of making it part of her look. And if glamorizing wearing ear defenders makes other people want to use ear defenders and therefore reduce their chance of having a meltdown and it becomes a bit more socially acceptable to do so and they don't feel as outcast in society. I'm struggling to see what's wrong with this. The following is from a 2022 Australian article. Autism is a lifelong disability and it's certainly not glamorous. The dedicated mom feels that the glamorizing of autism has significant impacts that are already being felt by the community globally. Celebrities, social media stars, and people who are actually self-diagnosing. How do you know that? Have you seen these people's medical records, why do we think it's okay to say this? Regardless of whether you're diagnosed or not, people are gonna say it. Have large followings and loud voices with a skewed and narrow message. This narrative excludes children like my sons and puts them in danger of not being able to access adequate support. I don't know how, but apparently it does. Respite, accommodation, therapy, support workers, financial aid, medical assistance, and appropriate education and workforce support should be readily available. I think that's what Chloe Hayden is trying to say as well. If the public and people in government are exposed to autism being a superpower, quirky, and glamorous, then my fear is they will stop providing adequate care, support, and funding. You don't grow out of autism. Autism is a lifelong disability. We need to ensure that those who are unable to have a voice for themselves are represented and have advocates who will fight for their human rights. What I think people are saying is, I look at these people, they don't look like my children. I don't think they're autistic enough. I think they're making it up or they have something else and they need to actually shut up. I think that's kind of what's being said here, actually. As I always say, though, I am aware that autism is a spectrum. People struggle with different things. And I absolutely would not equate my experience, and I doubt any autistic creator would. We would not say, oh yes, we're all autistic, so our experience is exactly the same. We are exactly the same as your sons. We wouldn't say that. I don't understand why it needs to be a competition to out autistic each other. I feel like this mother is coming from a place of not having enough support, feeling like her support is at risk and like she has to fight a lot to get what she has. 
has and therefore she's kind of using the TikTokers and celebrities that she sees as a bit of a scapegoat rather than going directly to the people who get to decide whether or not she gets any funding or not because TikTokers have no say in that. I don't know, there are some autistic people who say autism absolutely should not be a diagnosable medical condition and that's something to talk about for another day but I feel like most people in the autism community say autism is a disability and autistic people all over the spectrum need more support. What we have right now is not good enough. I feel like we're all fighting the same battle here and we don't all need the same supports because it is a spectrum. So I don't really think autistic content creators are putting the supports that this person's children have at risk. I think it's great if autistic creators can talk about, you know, bigger issues facing the autism community and not just always focusing on their own experience. Although sharing your lived experience certainly has its place and can be helpful. I know because so many creators helped me and I don't think I would have my diagnosis today. It absolutely changed my life to hear from other autistic creators. So I don't want them to stop speaking about their experience personally. Even for autistic people who are seen as lowest support needs, life is often not glamorous. It can involve hospitalizations. Autistic people are more likely to take their own lives. Autistic people who are low support needs still have huge issues with employment. And on top of that, as well as having all these difficulties, they're not believed by the people around them. So they're not accessing any support. So it's not glamorous, I agree, but I don't think we are glamorizing autism. I think it's just much needed representation. I'm glad there's more equality in diagnosis now. And I think we still have a long way to go. If you would like to see another video from me, I did one responding to this Harvard psychiatrist who went on the Diary of a CEO podcast and basically said that obesity causes autism and a bunch of other stuff. It was an interesting journey. If you would like more videos like this one, these kind of more essay style take quite a long time to script. If you would like to have more of them, then I do have a Patreon. It's $4 a month for the lowest tier and you get to join the Discord server as well. So you can chat to other autistic people. It's a really, really lovely community. And then there's also two exclusive videos going up on there per month. Also podcast episodes and all sorts on the higher tiers as well. There's a load of stuff that's gonna be thrown your way soon and that sounds really aggressive but it's not it's gonna be fun you're gonna enjoy it hopefully hopefully you'll enjoy it i can't promise anyway i'm waffling now i've got two book reviews coming off i'm gonna be reviewing orion kelly's book autism feels and then ellie middleton's book unmasked as well i'm gonna be reviewing those as my next exclusive videos and if you would like to enter the giveaway with Balesa then you can do it. as I say you've got nothing to lose you just click the top link in the description add in your email address and yeah just just give it a go see what you get see if you can get yourself a very glamorous free vibrator and you know you support the channel as well when you do so but either way thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon bye